Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 8, Chapter 5. Demigod's appeal to the Lord, the last verse in the chapter number 50. Namas tu biamanantai ha ha. Durvetarkyatmakarmane. Nugun nirgunaya guneshaya. Sattva staya ca sampratam Namas tubyam manantaya Durvetarkyatma karmane Nirgunaya guneshaya Sattva staya ca sampratam Namas tu byam manantaya Durvatar kyatma karmane Nirgunaya gunesaya Sarfastaya sach sampratam Nama, <clears throat> all obeisances to Byam, unto you, my Lord, Anantaya, who are everlasting, transcending the three phases of time, past, present, and future. Durviktarkya Atma Karmane. Unto you who perform inconceivable activities, Nirgunaya, which are all transcendental, free from the inebriety of material qualities, Guna Isaya, unto you 
who control the three modes of material nature. Sattvastaya, who are in favor of the material quality of goodness. Cha, also, sampratam, at present. So this is, I believe this is the demigods are speaking here. My Lord, all, all obeisances unto you, who are eternal, beyond time's limits of past, present, and future. You are inconceivable in your activities. You are of the master of the three modes of material nature, and being transcendental to all material qualities, you are free from material contamination. You are the controller of all the three modes of nature, but at present you are in favor of the quality of goodness. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto you. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of Godhead controls the material activities manifested by the three modes of material nature. So there it says, the Lord is the, the controller of all the material activities and Material activities consist of what? Three modes of material nature. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Nirgunam Guna Bhaktir Cha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always transcendental to the material qualities. Sattvagun, Rajagun, and Tamagunas. But nonetheless, he is their controller. So Krishna is in control, but at the same time, he's unaffected by it. If we touch something or get involved with something, we also become affected by the thing we get involved with. But he can control the material nature and yet become free from the, any of the effects of that control. This is the difference. It's, so it's, it's good to see the difference between the living entity and God. We come in contact with activities and we're influenced by the activities because of our contact with it. But he comes in, doesn't come in contact, but at the same time, he controls it through his various energies. And therefore, he is free from all the effects of the material activities. That's why people sometimes blame God for what happens here. He has nothing to do with it. <laughs> he, puts it in, he puts it in motion, and by its own laws, and by the energies which control those modes, things happen this way or that way. He's almost like a watchmaker who makes a watch, and then at the same time the watch works by itself after. He has nothing to do with the activities of the watch. The Lord manifests himself in three features as Brahma, Vishnu, and Heshwar to control these three qualities. So these are called what? What kind of avatars are these called? Guna avatars. So Krishna manifests himself in how many types of avatars? Well, there's how many categories of avatars? Hmm? You said nine? It's a little less. <laughs> less. Six. Six. What are the six categories of avatars? We have the good of avatars, and what else? <coughs> hmm? Leela avatars, okay. Like Matsya, Korma, Nishringa, they're all Leela avatars. That's two. What's another one? Yuga avatars. What's an example of a Yuga avatar? Hmm? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, okay, for this yuga. He's a yuga avatar. Huh? Buddha? Buddha? No. <laughs> no he's not in anywhere in, considered an avatar. In that, in that category, he's not. He's in one category, but he's not in that one. 
Shaktivesha avatar. And what's a Shaktivesha avatar? Who knows what that is? Shakta Vesha. Give me an example of a Shakta Vesha avatar. Srila Prabhupada, yeah. An empowered manifestation that, that comes on behalf of the Lord and does the work of the Lord in the world. Parasaram is considered to be also Shaktivesha avatar. Um, Vyasadeva, Shaktivesha avatar. Prabhupada. Like that. Those who come to do the work of the Lord directly uh, sent by the Lord. Or those who, who do the work of the Lord but are not directly sent but become empowered after qualify themselves through their own spiritual activities. So there's two kinds, direct and indirect. Jesus Christ, Shaktivesha avatar. <laughs> Okay, that's four. We got Shaktivesh, we got Guna, we got Leela, and we got, what was the other one we did? Yuga Avatar. So there's two more. Hmm? You're getting close. Hmm? Uh, yeah, 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 the... Uh, what do they call them? Well, we call them Vishnu avatars, or what do they call them? Yeah, there's a word for them. The, uh, the avatars that uh, do the work of creation. And then there's one, Manvantara. Yeah, the Manus. They're also avatars of Krishna. So six categories. <coughs> So, Lord, the Lord personally takes charge of sattva and he becomes what? What personality becomes? Huh? Vishnu, right? He becomes Vishnu and he entrusts the charge of raja and tama to... Hmm? Hmm? Brahman Shiva, okay. Ultimately, however, he is the controller of the three gunas. So although he manifests himself as Vishnu and Brahma and Shiva's Gun avatars, he controls those three avatars and he's separate from them. Lord Brahma expresses his appreciation, said that because Lord Vishnu has now taken charge of the activities of the mode of goodness, there was every hope that the demigods would be successful in fulfilling their desires. The demigods are harassed by the demons who are infested with tamo, Tamogun. However, as Lord Brahma had previously described, since the time of the Sattvagun had now arrived, the demigods could naturally expect to fulfill their desires. The demigods are supposedly well advanced in knowledge, yet they could not understand the knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Lord is addressed here as an Antaya, Although Lord Brahma knows past, present, and future, he is unable to understand the unlimited knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Is there, is there air conditioning on? Or something? There's a cold breeze coming in some, from somewhere. <clears throat> no? Yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, I <clears throat> I can't speak if it gets too cold. My voice will get affected. <clears throat> Om Agyan Timirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guruve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapti Tamyena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Jaya Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो ब्रह्मा इज ग्लोरिफाइंग द लॉर्ड एंड सेइंग नाउ यू हैव फेवर्ड द डेमी गॉड्स एंड देयरफॉर बिकॉज़ यू हैव फेवर्ड द डेमी गॉड्स द डेमी गॉड्स विल हैव देयर डिजायर्स फुलफिल्ड सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू अंडरस्टैंड uh the if we want to get if we want to be successful in life we have to get favored by the lord <laughs> in other words success means the mercy of the lord or the favor of the lord and sometimes we say favor mercy because the word practically means the same if the lord somehow or other shows a living entity a particular a favor mercy notices that person then a person's life is successful <laughs> so how to get the favor of the lord <laughs> well we might say the lord is pleased by the activities of devotional service and therefore when one pleases the lord one receives the mercy and favor of the lord <laughs> and that's a general principle to try to serve in such a way that the lord is pleased by our service <laughs> so that's in that means to serve in the mood of trying to please the lord and not just serve that means we should have to add that element of trying to please the lord with our service but there's a special way to please the lord that is guaranteed and that is that if you want to please the lord we have to understand that there is different types of ways to please the lord there's more there's everything is direct but there's one that really has a very direct manifestation towards the lord's heart and that is if one takes up the mission of preaching krishna consciousness <laughs> and then one becomes immediately recognized by the lord and gets the favor of the lord simply by this particular activity in other words therefore the lord has descended himself in order to spread his own glories through the sankirtan movement and to purify this material world of the conditioned souls desires and therefore he's made a great effort to personally come and perform his activities in order to uplift the conditioned souls so anyone who assists him in that becomes very much a personal a personal confidential servant of the lord and becomes recognized by the lord <laughs> so um, this is the this is the secret of krishna consciousness let me see is there some secret yeah this is it <laughs> fridge or put yourself in the position to help others in krishna consciousness and then you become immediately recognized and then lord chaitanya in chaitanya charitamrita is mentioned he says i am a gardener gardening is a very when we say krishna conscious activity it's very much in tone with the earth it's very what we say uh there's a kind of a peacefulness that comes with that kind of relationship with mother nature and he says i'm a gardener and i have collected so many fruits in my gardening and i have put them in this big storehouse and there's so many fruits and not only am i storing them but i'm also tasting them and what are these fruits these fruits are so sweet i'm taking them and because i want you to enjoy them i'm contributing them also but i want everyone to have the fruits not just a few people therefore taste these sweet fruits yourself and then help me to distribute them <laughs> i'm only one person i can't do it alone that's what he says <laughs> this is lord chaitanya speaking i can't do it alone i need help <laughs> so may i become my uh, assistant taste them enjoy them himself feel the happiness and sweetness of these fruit and then distribute it to others Hmm. the principle of the principle of life is that when something makes you happy 
there's a tendency you want to share with others, right? You get some good fortune, you have some experience. Or maybe a devotee goes on and hears this wonderful melody of kirtan. It says, wow, this is a wonderful melody. And you want to share it with some of your friends, right? Listen to this melody. Wow, it's fantastic. And then you kind of share it with others. Or sometimes you get something nice to eat. It tastes real good and you're really excited about it. So you go over and say, hey, taste this. It's really nice. <laughs> so this is, this, is the, this is human nature, wanting to share the happiness of our experience with others through that item. So this is the element of bhakti and this is the element of what we say, preaching. To want to give Krishna consciousness to others. And then Prabhupada mentions that <clears throat> there are devotees who practice Krishna consciousness just for their own spiritual elevation. And there's those who practice for, in order to become Krishna consciousness, it's Krishna conscious so they can help others also. And says the second ones get recognized by the Lord like that. Even the first ones get some recognition but not as much or even nearly as much as the ones who actually distribute Krishna consciousness to others. So how to distribute Krishna consciousness? There's so many different ways. Uh, the waves are as unlimited of the, as they are the ocean waves on the ocean. There's so many ways. Therefore, everyone can do something or position himself in such a way as to give Krishna consciousness to others. It's easy. You just have to think. First of all, you have to do is think, I want to do it. As soon as you want to do it, all of a sudden, you get the idea how to do it. If you don't want to do it, you can't think of any ideas how to do it. <laughs> the desire to do it brings the ideas how to do it. <laughs> and there's a beautiful saying that illustrates this, and it's a feature of life. Even the non-devotees know this principle. And the principle was spoken actually by a non-devotee who says, as soon as you make a commitment to do something, then the opportunities to fulfill that, act that commitment become revealed through your desire. When the desire is there, not there, the opportunities are not seen. In other words, desire moves the material energy in such a way as to reveal ways to fulfill a desire. That's true even in a basic day-to-day -day life. If you want to like rob a place, and you're really determined to be a you know a successful thief, you'll come up with so many ideas how to do it. <laughs> Look at a terrorist. The terrorists are determined to kill people. So they're had, because they're so determined, they're getting so many ideas and they're successful, right? And there's another bombing I just read yesterday in Turkey. 22 people got killed at a wedding ceremony, another terrorist attack. It's happening like every couple of days. Now. They're so determined. And therefore, because of their determination, they get so many ideas how to do things. So even if it works for the demons, <laughs> And the, the terrorists, it especially works for the devotees. <laughs> especially work. And that's the feature of material energy. So when we become determined, just like Prabhupada writes in one verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, some say Krishna consciousness is easy, and some say Krishna consciousness is difficult. So then, he, he poses the question to the reader, is it difficult or is it easy? And then he goes on to answer it. He says, for those who have determination, it's easy. <laughs> In other words, when one is determined for the goal, the goal becomes easily accessible. And when one is not determined, it's like a leaf in the wind. One gets blown in different directions with no, what, with no focus like that. So when we take up Krishna consciousness, we learn what, we, what, is, what is that goal of Krishna consciousness? Who knows? What's the goal of Krishna consciousness? There's only one goal. 
Yeah, but explain. Well, non-devotees are working for Krishna too. What is the goal of Krishna consciousness? Hmm? Yeah, to love Krishna. <laughs> to, to awaken your natural love for Krishna. <laughs> That's the goal. That's all. There's no second goal. Second goals support the first goal. You might put yourself in a situation where you do a particular service. And that may be a goal to achieve that service, but that service will maybe facilitate your ability to awaken your love for Krishna. So, in other words, whatever we do in the, in the activity, we may preach, we may um, cook, we may sing, we may manage, but these are not the goals. It's not, it's not about being a good preacher, or be a good we say a singer or a good cook. These are not goals at all. These are ways to serve the Lord, but the goal is to develop love for God. Prema Pumartha Mahan. Because the love of God is as natural for the living entity as breathing is natural for a human being in this world. Do we actually, when we breathe, do we actually become conscious of our activities of breathing? It happens automatically, right? We don't even have to, you know. If you stand there and say, okay, okay, let it out, bring it in, let it out, you go nuts. <laughs> and it's also very debilitating. <laughs> so, but it's because it's natural, to breathe because you have a body and everything's set up for you. The air's there, the lungs are there. Um, you know, you go, do you do it? So to love God is natural. <laughs> to not to love God is to be in an unnatural situation. <laughs> or to not awaken one's love for God. Everyone loves God, but some can experience that love because they're directed towards the material energy. So when we actually love God, when we direct our sense self to practicing love of God, then it becomes more and more obvious in our experience that love starts to awaken. So how do you love God? <laughs> there you know, how to bring about love of God. Love is, is, uh, is done by two things, service and to cooperate with others who are serving. <laughs> this is how to love God. Cooperation, and it's not like I love God and that's all that counts. <laughs> or I'm going to worry about my love of God. No. It's, it's, a, it's a thing called sankirtan. It's, in other words, together. Together we're trying to be, become lovers of God. Not individually, knowing like that. That's why we do everything together. We chant together. We serve together. We perform various activities of devotional service together. Why? Because it's all about inspiring each other to come to that goal of love of God through the association and through the service. So love means two things, to cooperate with others who are, who are serving the Lord and to actually serve like that. So love means cooperation, love means service, that's all. Mm -hmm. And that manifests itself as, a, as, as a, in the form of that, it awakens our natural love for Krishna. Then when we see the Lord on the altar, so you see Kishore Kishori. If you actually had pure love of God and you, took, you take darshan, you wouldn't be able to stand there, you'd fall over. <laughs> you'd experience, you would be experiencing ecstatic symptoms simply by seeing them. So of course, maybe we're not on that platform or maybe when we see the Lord, we become happy. If we see the Lord, we think, oh, what can I ask him? That's not love of God, that's love of me. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ask him something because he's, he's God and he can give me a lot of things. And he's a big guy, <laughs> he's, a, he's a controller. He's got the, he's got the bucks, right? <laughs> 
Therefore, let me ask him something because for him to give something is no loss for him. And I need something. That's, that's going shopping. <laughs> so a devotee doesn't ask anything from the Lord. The, the, the Lord, the devotee asks us how to serve the Lord. And so and that, is the, that is the mood of a devotee. How can I serve you? That's my position in relationship to you. And simply by that service, one has the opportunity to please the Lord. And through that pleasing the Lord, then the Lord awakens within that devotee love. <clears throat> and when he's pleased with us, he says, okay, you can have my mercy. And then when he gets, you get his mercy, you feel happy, your material desires are diminished, your material sufferings become less and less gradually. And ultimately, you develop knowledge of him, you develop love from him, you develop freedom from material and desire. These are all symptoms of the Lord being pleased in our execution of devotional service, like that. So a devotee is always trying to please the Lord and please the Lord by pleasing the Lord's devotees. So it's, you might say it's easier, is it easier to please the Lord or is it easier to please the Lord's devotees? What would you say? Oh, well, you can see the devotees from day to day, and so you can think of different ways to please them, right? And then that way, the Lord becomes pleased when the devotee becomes pleased, like that. <clears throat> the Lord is not as not so easy to please, although he make he sound he makes himself available in, through various types of service. It says that because the, the spiritual master accepts our service and gives that service to Krishna, Krishna accepts our service. But Krishna will not accept service that is mixed with our material desires. In other words, he only accepts pure devotional service. So how do you execute pure devotional service? You serve the spiritual master and he takes your service and gives it to Krishna and says, this person is so nice, Krishna. Look what he's done. It's just like if you want to, uh, you want to meet the President of the United States. Of course, nobody wants to read them nowadays. But using that example. <laughs> or we might even say, we might even want to meet the President of India. You know, you know. What's his name again? I forgot. Huh? Yeah, President Modi. Very fine man. He's the best president I think they've ever had. He's a Vaishnava, and he's, he wants to bring Vedic culture back to India. He's, a, he's actually a sadhu. So if you want to meet Mr. Modi, I mean, wonderful person. Well, how, how can you meet him? You can't just say, call him up and say, Hey, Mr. Modi, you got some time this afternoon? I want to drop in and discuss some things. <clears throat> no, you have to really go through his secretaries, his ministers, his people who he put in place. And then they'll talk to him and say, this person wants to see you at that time. And then if he's, you know, if he's pleased with the way that, you know, in other words, if the servant is pleased, with the way you approach the servant, he might say, oh yeah, it's okay, sounds good. So in that way, we get the mercy of a big person. So in order to get the mercy of Krishna, we need to get the mercy of Krishna's pure devotee, the spiritual master. So how do we get the mercy of Krishna's pure devotee? That's easy, just do what he says. <laughs> And see, you want, if you, they say, what does it say in the Bible? If you love me, do what I say. <laughs> That's all. He says, chant Hare Krishna. And you chant Hare Krishna? He's pleased. <clears throat> if he says, you know, um, read Srimad Bhagavatam, and you read Srimad Bhagavatam, he's pleased. Come to the temple to see the deity, and you do that, he's pleased. So he's pleased in so many different ways. 
But the strength of your, in, in, of your activity brings about the element of pleasure on different levels. How much you're eager for these things brings about a greater, what we say, reciprocation. If you're, in other words, if you're so eager to see the deities, but at the same time you've got a date with some person that you're going to get some money from, I got to go meet this person and get some money. But I want to go see the deities. Nah, I'm not going to take the money. I'm going to go see Krishna. That means you got a strong desire to see the Lord. In other words, when you pass up your own personal concerns to serve the Lord, that shows the element of what we say desire. So Krishna will put you in that position. He'll, ch he'll test you just to see how much you actually are, want him. If you want him because <clears throat> it's easy, <clears throat> when, when everything is convenient, that's nice. <clears throat> but when it's difficult and you have to make a sacrifice to follow his instructions, ah, there you go. There's where the word element of cooperation comes in. To cooperate is not easy in this age. It's very difficult. It's because this is the age of Kali. And the age of Kali is the age of quarrel, the age of dissension, the age of, of you know, doing your own thing, right? That becomes a cliche, do your own thing, right? Even in, vice, even in spiritual circles, doing your own thing. But that doesn't work. <laughs> do Krishna's thing, <laughs> but do it together with others. And that becomes your own thing. <laughs> So therefore, the spiritual master is teaching us the simple way how to engage in devotional service. Therefore, if one has, one has faith in the spiritual master and the Lord, yasya devi para bhaktir yata devi tata goto tasyaita pratite karta prakasanat mahatmanaha one who has implicit faith in both the spiritual master and the Lord, then all the imports of all Vedic knowledge become automatically revealed. You don't have to even study the Vedas. All you have to do is please the spiritual master as your focus in life. In other words, whatever he says, that's all I need to know. And therefore, and the element that makes that successful is always try to find out what he wants. So there's an active element. How can I please him? I might get the instruction, but how to carry out the instruction in the best possible way. So there's elements. We use the simple term, please the spiritual master. But... The intelligence that it takes to please the spiritual master comes by way of the enthusiasm to please the spiritual master. In other words, if you love someone, you go out of your way to please them. Love doesn't have any difficulty. In fact, love doesn't know any difficulty. Love has no difficulty. When, something, when some love is there or some strong desire that is an element of pleasing, then difficulties become, what we say, opportunities. Opportunities. <coughs> and so, therefore, the spiritual master is always giving instructions. Chant 16 rounds. He says that, but chant with attention chat with devotion, chat early in the morning. Make, is that sign still up on the board here? Oh yeah, what does it say? 16 good rounds, G-O-O-D. <laughs> no, not 16 rounds, but 16 good rounds. That means one should access all of one's enthusiasm and energy to chat in the best possible way. Not like, um, there's a thing called audakshina. Audakshina is a type of japa that is not recommended. That means 
uh, nonchalant, apathetic, routine, mechanical. <laughs> Just chanting to get the words out and getting the, the uh, what we say, the japa completed like that. You know, it becomes just like, you know, if you're working at an office, you know, you have to print out a piece of paper. So you just put the paper in the machines, push the button, the button comes and it prints it. Routine. <laughs> so it's not like that. Japa's an, Japa is a, uh, it's a battle. It's a battle between you and your restless mind. <laughs> Chanchala, Himana Krishna, Pramati Balava Dhirha. So, Chanchala means restless. You know, just like even now I'm speaking and some of you are thinking about other things. It's, it's obvious. <laughs> I can see that. You can't hide it. <laughs> it's easy to see. <laughs> you can tell when someone is listening and someone is not listening. It's just All I have to do is look at them. <laughs> So don't try to hide. <laughs> so yeah, so when we have our japa, our mind is going this way and that way and this way. So if you want to access quality in the hearing process, then one has to, what they, they say, the Padma Purana says, one has to destroy the faults of the mind. So what is the... What does that mean? The restless mind goes here, bring it back. Krishna says that in the Gita. Wherever and whenever the mind goes due to its flickering and unsteady nature, so Krishna says the mind is flickering. It jumps from place to place. It's unsteady. It's a prostitute. It has no particular allegiance. The allegiance of the mind is to itself. Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta said, Bhakti Siddhanta gives a very strong statement to find, he says, your mind is a non-devotee, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and we're not supposed to associate with non-devotees. <laughs> so don't associate <laughs> with your wild mind. Bring the mind back to the sound vibration of the process of hearing the holy name, hearing the holy scriptures, he, or keeping the mind focused on the process. And so that takes practice. When Arjun says that statement, he said, the mind is restless, unsteady, turbulent, and very strong, O Krishna. You're telling me to control the mind I think you're asking me to control the wind. He said that to Krishna. And what did Krishna say? You're right. <laughs> he agreed with him. But he said, it's possible. He said, Abhyasena tukontaya vairagya chagriyate. He says, by practice and by giving up material desires, then you can control the mind. So material desires will keep the mind moving towards fulfillment of those desires, and therefore the mind is restless, always trying to fulfill some, some desire, either directly or, or, or more on the subtle nature, like that. So that's the nature of the mind. So therefore, hearing regularly from the spiritual master, keeping the mind focused on the instructions of the spiritual master, and trying to execute those instructions with enthusiasm and determination. Srila Rupa Goswami says, if you want success in bhakti, you need enthusiasm and determination. And then you also need patience. Because although you're enthusiastic and you also may be, you can't force the results. Krishna will give the results in due course of time. Like that. So these are the three elements. Utsahan, Nishjaya, Darya. <laughs> Enthusiasm, determination, and patience. So the main thing is to keep our mind and focused on what is the instructions of the spiritual master. And then thinking how to execute those instructions in the best possible way. 
That's success in bhakti. When Krishna sees that, then he bestows his mercy. We can't approach Krishna directly. As we use the example of trying to get, get the darshan of a great person, you can't approach Krishna directly. You have to approach Krishna through his representative. But his representative is more merciful than he is. Krishna may say, who's this guy? <laughs> he's, just, he's a useless. <laughs> but the spiritual master will say, no, Krishna, I'm, he's trying. Give him a chance. And Krishna says, okay. <laughs> because you have recommended him. Therefore, he's okay. <laughs> So that's, that's the mercy. That's why we say the spiritual master is the mercy manifestation of God. He's more merciful than God. Now, how can, he, how can be one be more merciful than God? Because he's delivering the mercy of God. That's why. He has, he ha, he has attained that mercy by his own spiritual power and by his pure devotion. Therefore, he can distribute it everywhere. But if you ask Krishna for his mercy directly, he might say, <clears throat> sorry, I'm out to lunch. <laughs> I gotta go dance with the gopis. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> In other words, you know, he can put you on hold <laughs> for a long time. So, but if you, if you come to the spiritual master and you please the spiritual master, what pleases the spiritual master? Hmm? Well, by doing what he says, but the mood of wanting to do what he says. So three things, tadviri patipatena paripasyena sevaya upadeksyanti te jnanam jnanina tadvadarshana. Tadviri pratipatena, pratipatena, means submission, paripasyena, that is inquiry, and sevaya, being submissive, inquiring, and we willing to do service. These are the three things that make one's life successful. Spiritual master is pleased when he sees these three things. Krishna spoke these words. The spiritual master didn't write these words. Krishna spoke these words directly saying, you want to please me, here's how you do it. You find my pure devotee and you do these three things. You become submissive, you, you, you inquire from him how, how to please, and then when he gives you the answer, you carry it out. That's all. Simple. It's really easy. Bhakti is so easy. Bhakti is easy. But because our minds are like, you know, they're like, you know, they're usually out to lunch and they don't come back. <laughs> it's like a long lunch break. They just go, you know, and they just do what they want to do. And the mind just does what it wants to do, right? The intelligence is the guiding factor for the mind. The intelligence is the strength that brings the mind back to where it's supposed to be. But the intelligence can also be a co-conspirator with the mind if the intelligence is geared towards material life. So, but when the intelligence is fueled by, by scriptural knowledge and by the instructions of the spiritual master, then the intelligence brings the mind back to where it's supposed to be. That's when that's, the term is Shastra Chakshush. Ch Shastra means scripture, Chakshush means to see. To see through scripture, to see through the eyes of the Guru. What can we see? We can't see anything. <laughs> oh, I want to see. Let me take darshan of God. What will you say? You can't see anything. <laughs> You look at it, you see a statue. It looks pretty. <laughs> but therefore, the word darshan is divided into two words, drishya and drashya. One who sees and one who is being seen. 
So when you take, when you stand in front of the deity, you're not taking, darshan is not you seeing the Lord. Darshan is the Lord seeing you. <laughs> That's Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, confirmed by Srila Prabhupada. Darshan means that I present myself in front of the Lord in such a way he wants to see me. That's darshan. Bhakti Siddhanta was standing in front of the deities and, and, one devo and he had forgotten his glasses. And one of his disciples said, Guru Maharaj, can I bring your glasses? He says, never mind, what can we see? <laughs> We want to be we want to be seen by the Lord. So we, in, in order to be seen by the Lord, we have to be we have to put ourselves in such a way that the Lord wants to see us. Like that. So that that is actually darshan. <laughs> like, like that. Then when you're in that mood, then you can take you can actually see Krishna. Or you can get elements of Krishna's presence in the front of you in the form of the deity. We simply want to please the Lord. So that's the process of devotional service. So the Lord became pleased with the demigods, and when because he became pleased with the demigods, he, the demigods became successful. Krishna says, Samoham Savabhuteshu Namedvaisustinas Priya. I am equal to everyone. I envy no one. He doesn't even envy the demons. He loves the demons just as much as he loves the devotees. That's God. His love is perfect. He makes no distinction between, because they're all his parts and parcels. But he may favor the devotees over the demons because they serve the Lord and the demons do not. So Krishna in that verse says, one who serves me gets my favor, but still my love is equal. How do the demons get benefited? They get killed by the Lord, and therefore they get liberation, and therefore they get the mercy of the Lord. That's the best thing for them. So Krishna is equal to everyone. He doesn't favor one living entity over another, but he reciprocates how we approach him. So this is the thing, how we approaching God. What are we, we coming to God, what are we doing? Are we asking for something material or are we asking for something spiritual? And that's the thing. If you, if you ask for something material, then Krishna puts you under a different agent and then that person may fulfill your desire. Krishna doesn't fulfill your material desires. <laughs> he doesn't. He has agencies to do that. It's just like, um, you know, the the big man in the office, he has his secretary. So someone calls up and wants some material favor from the person. So the secretary communicates it to the big, the big man. He says, oh, that's not my job. He can go see this person. He can do that for him. <laughs> but if you, want, if you want to love Krishna, oh, then he's there for you personally. If you want to serve Krishna, he's there for you personally. But if you want something, some material benefit, he'll say, oh, okay, well, that's not my office. Go down to the other office down the street here. Vishnu's down there. You can talk to him. <laughs> Krishna is not, he's not. So, so God has his departments, and they work very nicely. And so we want to come in contact with Krishna. We need to... So we need to approach him with devotion. Bhaktiyamam avajananti yavam yavan yas tatmi tatvataha. What is the rest of that verse? Bhaktiyamam avajananti yavan yatasvataha. Tato mam visate. The last word is anantaram. Vishvate. Vishwate, yeah. So one who has bhakti can enter into the kingdom of God and have the association of the Lord. Bhakti is the only currency. <laughs> okay, any questions? Comments? Thank you very much, Maharaj. I have 
one comment and one question. Uh, you're talking about the what is the goal of life, and uh, the ultimate goal of life is Krishna prema, love for Krishna. But uh, it, it's become very theoretical, you know, day-to-day -day process. That okay, we are in ISKCON, Krishna Consciousness Movement, and our prayer books in the morning says to achieve the goal of life, Krishna prema. But ultimately, how do we know how to attain Krishna prema? And that's how do we know what? how to attain Krishna prema? And I think you made it very clear that unless you surrender to his his devotees and work sincerely for him, correct me if I'm wrong, Maharaj. If we don't work sincerely for Krishna, how can we get reciprocation from Krishna without working sincerely? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, "Yayatam mam prapadyante tamstataiva bhajami mam avartmana martante manusya partasa." As you approach me. I reward you accordingly. You approach with love, he reciprocates. You approach with some material desire, he may reciprocate that way. What's all? Krishna, sometimes Prabhupada would say Krishna is like a mirror. What you hold in front of it is what you reflect back. He's going to give you, or he's going to basically reciprocate with you the way you approach him. That's all. If you want to develop love for him, he'll show you how to do it. He'll help you directly. If you don't, if you want material desires, then he'll arrange for that to be, happen in a, different, in a different way. But you don't get Krishna. So how, the answer is your approach, that's so. If, you are, if you're less than sincere, then he'll give you. Krishna Prabhupada said, you approach Krishna 30%, you get 30% reciprocation. You get. That's why you can't say, well, why is this person getting more than me? Well, because they're approaching different, that's all. Everyone is, has a, is getting according to how they approach, that's all. If you have a side agenda that, oh, okay, my dear Lord, I'll worship you and I'll even offer nice prayers to you, but, you know, my program is, you know, I got to get this job, you know. <laughs> so, you know, in other words, is there something on the side? Or make me a, make me a temple president. <laughs> I'll worship you. <laughs> or actually put me in charge of the treasury. That's even better. In other words, some motivation on a personal level. <laughs> but, so therefore, Krishna will reciprocate accordingly, generally. Of course, you have to qualify in order to fulfill that desire, but if you're qualified and that's your desire, then Krishna will reciprocate that way. <laughs> But you will never be satisfied with that. You can only be satisfied when you actually experience a relationship with Krishna. That's the only way you can be satisfied. There's no other way. Material things don't satisfy the soul. They don't reach. Anyone, any other questions? Okay. All right, you talk about that verse 434, Paripatina Sevaya. So there should be submission, service, Pariprasena, submission, service, and what is the third one? Inquiry. Inquiry. Three things should be there um, submission, inquiry, and, and service. Sevaya. Yeah. Okay. So it happens sometimes that disciple may be submissive, may be rendering service, but his inquiry is less. Or maybe one of the things is less. It's not coming up. All the three are not totally in the disciple. So in that situation... Oh, the inquiry is, how can I serve? <laughs> Suppose he is doing inquiry, but his seva is less. So how, how can we put all together in our whole one basket and work in that? Work on it. <laughs> Just work on it, that's all. It's not that you have to ask every question under it that's possible. The question is, some people don't even ask any questions, they just hear good. 
And because they hear good, the hearing goes right to the heart, and then they're enthusiastic and they carry it out. <laughs> if, you, if you're not clear, then questions are necessary. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said, I, never, I hardly asked any questions to my spiritual master, but I did ask one, how can I serve you? <laughs> if you ask every other question but that, then you, you haven't asked any questions yet. <laughs> Or all your other questions should lead to that question, how can I serve? <laughs> That's our nature. 